prior to that i was uh, uh, working in the quality assurance departments of various uh, uh, multinational companies uh, my uh, my actually introduction to stock market was uh, nothing more than a coincidence where uh, in the year 2007 i was asked by my mom to square off uh, my dad's uh, portfolio uh, my dad had untimely demise uh, and so i was given this job to square off this position and when i when i did that it was nothing much just a, just a million rupees or something but i uh, asked myself this question as to on what basis or what premise am i going to square this off is this the right time to sell it or not uh, that one question led to basically a uh, pandora box box opened up and i started reading on the subject and one thing led to another i realized that uh, i'm liking it and so much so that i was uh, devouring book after another and and a fascinating relationship started with stock markets uh, initially i was uh, basically reading warren buffett and charlie munger and through that i got introduced to joel greenblatt and i started implementing what he was teaching on spin offs and mergers in the indian markets and uh, uh, from there on it just carried on and later uh, while my partner daya uh, continued with the with the demergers in the spin off world i i moved to more and more towards the quant side of it where i got introduced to the concept of momentum and i started back testing that thing in india and i realized that the edge holds true here and then from there on uh, mystic wealth has basically been doing both the things value and momentum uh, my partner dayan and desh pandey handles the value part and i take care of the momentum uh, so that's in in a nutshell how we started and it's been what uh, 10 years now, 11 years now. Great. So you are a proponent of uh, finding market inefficiencies to create alpha. So would you like to speak on that? Ah uh, yes, and uh, Prince, this is not something that has uh, happened overnight. Ah, uh, when I look back historically, I can safely say that I have made majority of my money when I was uh, doing uh, stuff systematically. Ah, uh, be it value or momentum, both. I have. net net burnt money in my discretionary uh, escapades uh, not much at best it must be breaking even but if you include the cost and transaction and the stress and whatever uh, it's uh, barely breaking even and in fact must be losing money uh, so so the underlying current was definitely the fact that the majority of the money has been made when we uh, left the human discretion out uh even in my value investing endeavors while while daya has lot of discretion even then the checklist almost ensures that uh, it's pr- practically uh, systematic for all all practical reasons within the spin offs and demerger domains there are there are set of things that uh, we we followed back then which uh, helped us uh, find those multi baggers so yes to answer your question in short uh the writing was pretty much on the wall by looking at our own excel sheets that we are making money uh, primarily by sticking to uh, what works which is called factor investing and remaining within the realms of that uh, factor uh, and uh, discretionaries where the human emotions take over and you uh, you only burn hands i mean one in a hundred probably do well Sonish, uh, would you like to simplify momentum investing for our uh, viewers? So, I mean, not everyone is aware what exactly it is all about. So, that would be great if you explain in a layman's language for them. Yes, sure, Prince. So, uh, in a nutshell, momentum investing is basically uh, saying, "जो ऊपर चढ़ रहा है वो चढ़ता रहेगा." So, for for translation. I'm I'm not sure if our audience can understand Hindi. What goes up continues going up is the underlying tenet uh, on which momentum investing works. Uh, sure, there is a concept of mean reversion that kicks in, but uh, the beauty is, or the entire point is, that the mean reversion kicks in uh, a lot later. The time frames are different. 
on a shorter time frame what goes up continues to go up uh, go up enough for us to capture it and get out before the mean, mean reversion kicks in now extensive back testing has been done on this subject in us there are uh, 100 year back tests available and uh, we have done podcasts with the who's who in the momentum world in stoic podcasting uh, to to bring home the same point that uh, this this anomaly is has been there and is here to stay now uh, uh, eugene farmer uh, Uh, who is considered the father of efficient market hypothesis uh, also uh, conceded that uh, uh, that the anomaly is definitely there and there is no other explanation to it there is alpha uh, otherwise the efficient market hypothesis is supposedly full proof but there's this one factor that is something that's going up if you invest there you beat daylights out of index so uh, that in a nutshell what momentum investing is and so uh, there are various ways to define momentum now uh, but essentially all ways uh, culminate into the point that you are chasing what's going up and you playing to the uh, to the understanding that it will continue to go up i mean uh, surely you will have uh, Uh, like any other trend following system your win rate would be lot lesser here however uh, the winners more than compensate for the losers because uh, the ones that really break out big uh, really catapult to stratosphere uh, pulling your uh, portfolio along All right manish so manish like uh, you talked about mechanical and discretionary things so would you also like to elaborate that and how emotions and biases uh, play a role in this yeah uh, books and books have been written on this prince so uh, uh, i don't want to repeat the whole thing again but uh, since you've asked this question and it's a very pertinent question i'll just tell you that uh, so there are people like mark minervini who will follow the same momentum set of rules but with their discretion uh, and what discretion essentially does is that it also gives you an amazing power to uh, uh, do aggressive position sizing and so you can generate some serious alpha as well uh, they also mix fundamentals uh, and earning uh, uh, earning surprises along with momentum to generate alpha problem with the whole thing is and actually it's not a problem per se but it's a fact of life is that for every one successful mark minervini there will be at least 1000 and i'm not exaggerating it may be 10000 people who would basically make a mockery of the whole thing because when you concentrated and when you using discretion uh, you are exposing yourself to your own personality and then your results are a sum total of who you are as a person and not just that the the things you're going through as a person during that part of your life let's say you're going through a, a bad health or bad relationship it will start reflecting in your pnl and uh, there are more chances that you will blow up and so the ideal solution at least for me i figured out is that to to compound my money consistently uh, systematically rather than relying on my personality which can be volatile at times where i would probably hit triple digits one year and go belly up the next yeah i hope i answered your question All right manish manish i saw one of your video in which you extensively talked about position sizing so would you uh, like to touch upon that and uh, obviously the services which you offer at uh, mystic wealth so our audience would be i mean we appreciate if you tell them they if they'll be interested they can get in touch also yeah yeah prince so uh, position sizing is a big topic in itself so it's outside the scope of this particular talk that we are having uh, i would uh, urge the audience to probably google position sizing mystic wealth on youtube and you'll come across this one hour webinar that we did uh, and in essence what we are trying to tell there is that position sizing is the holy grail if there is any in stock markets 
Uh, it's not the strategy. Of course, the strategy has to have an edge and it has to be profitable to start with. But once that caveat is taken care of, uh, the real difference between men and the boys is the position sizing. Uh, how you size for uh, optimal return and uh, also uh, within the position sizing framework is the power of uncorrelated strategies where you... Uh, you, where you run three or four strategies together and how beautifully the overall drawdown comes down and the equity curve becomes a lot more smoother. We have covered this topic in our presentations as well on YouTube videos. It's, it's amazing how when we club, let's say, Mystic Wealth Value, Mystic Wealth Momentum and Gold, all three together, and all three have their individual drawdowns, but because all three are positive edge strategies in itself, when you combine these three, it's just magically how it happens. The, it, it's a holy grail almost that the equity curve becomes smoother. And why it is important to have a smoother equity curve rather than the elevated one is that it gives you the holding power. Uh, uh, without which, uh, the gyrations will kill you and you'll get out at the worst possible time. Yeah. All right, Pani. So Manish, uh, yesterday a few of our uh, like uh, from Twitter family has asked you questions, so I'll be asking those. And uh, in the meantime, the audiences can there send their uh, speaker request. Uh, they can ask their questions, and I see Prashant and Deepak in the audiences. So Manish, uh, appreciate if you ask them to join in. So that would be more interactive. Yeah. So question is like Manish. One question is how do you screen stocks? Do you use any indicators? If yes, then which one has worked best for you? Uh, so there are various ways you can screen uh, stocks for uh, for your uh, momentum portfolio. Uh, we at Mystic Wealth don't use any indicators per se. The price action itself is an indicator. So. Uh, uh, but I won't rule out that uh, doing that is a bad thing. There are people who use uh, RSI or ADX, and which is well, well and fine. The idea is to find stocks which are doing much better than the others. The idea is to rank everyone. And so we at Mystic Well basically rank these stocks. A uh, lot of factors go into it, their volatility, uh, their overall rank over the uh, previous uh, few months uh, and uh, their distance from uh, from the highs is also a factor. There, there are many ways to skim the cat. So there are some people who will look for all-time highs. There are some people who can look for 52-week highs. There are some people who would basically rank them on the basis of uh, how fast they have run over the period of last six months, 12 months, nine months. Some people would uh, do a weighted average of their movement of the last six, nine, 12 months, so on and so forth. And then you can adjust them for their daily move so that uh, you're only handpicking the ones, uh, you're penalizing the ones which are popping up suddenly and you are selecting the ones which are growing consistently. Yeah. Uh, right. So uh, you talked about 52 week uh, high, all time high. So there is one question on this also. So in this strategy, what are the ways to reduce the risk in this? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. What are the ways you reduce the risk yeah. on it? Uh, so uh, drawdown is part of, if I understood the question correctly, the drawdown is part of life as far as momentum investing is concerned. So there is no holy grail. It's not that you will come up with something and uh, uh, automatically, magically, the drawdowns will simply vanish. If anything, the fear is that if you have come up with something like that, more often than not, you have curve fitted the data too much and what has worked in the past will not work in the future. So drawdown is part and parcel of uh, momentum investing. Whenever there is uh, less momentum or no momentum or when the market is range bound, you're bound to suffer in, in a momentum strategy. So in the back test, 2011 was a horrible year and because market went nowhere. Similarly, in the live performance, 2018-19 was pretty uh, dismal. All right, Pani. So another question is uh, factors to be considered before selling a position. Uh, 
Okay, so because uh, we uh, at Mystic Wealth practice uh, everything systematically, so the factors are uh, predefined. So actually, this question makes more sense uh, uh, for a discretionary portfolio where you uh, selling into strength or uh, uh, using uh, using price action to make your exits. Uh, for for a mechanical system. uh selling is as defined as an entry so there is no emotion involved uh either you will be getting out when the stock has lost its rank uh if you let's say if you've ranked the stocks on top 20 and you put a put a exit criteria as ki agar ye top 35 se bhi niche chala gaya ya top 40 or top 50 whatever your back test suggests then i will get out and so there is no answer to your question it's as mechanical as it can get agar if it it goes below that rank you're out then there are some people who do it with a trailing uh, stop loss uh, whatever trend following trail that they're following uh, if if it breaches that then then they're out there is no ambiguity there is no uh, there's no answer to this particular question how, what factors go into the selling so if the selling decision your pre coded selling decision has triggered you are just getting out right manish so we have uh, deepak and prashant with us uh, for sure they'll be having great questions to grill manish and uh, get the best out of him so deepak and prashant over to you and in between i'll ask another questions also so deepak yeah okay hi manish um, manish there is a one simple question let's say uh, your uh, portfolio is of 20 stocks and let's say two have exited and uh, based on the criteria of stock selection so uh, let's say two first two stocks will be in and uh, then uh, i think it is a factor of uh, luck that uh, the other selected stocks don't do uh, equally well or uh, you know uh, more uh, uh, than the uh, stocks that were uh, selected as uh, entries so does it uh, i mean um, if we take this as a criteria let's say that top two you selected uh, didn't do well i hope they don't uh, do like this but let's say the two you selected by your system didn't do well but the rest that were left but were uh, satisfying the criteria they did extremely well or a, a set of uh, those stocks did extremely well so will this be um, uh, you know uh, can this be uh, back tested uh, in Uh, the historic performance or a factor of luck comes into play uh, around this yeah deepak that is uh, that's an awesome question and uh, we've had this discussion uh, in our slack channel on this topic many a times you uh, can never take away the the factor of luck out of the momentum investing uh, like it's an, it's it's such a potent point that you made like i'll give you a live example uh, mystic wealth uh, momentum missed goa carbon long uh, because when the buy signal came our 20 quota was full and there was no exit and so we basically missed a 8 or a 9 bagger did that affect our result in the overall uh, scheme of things the answer is no so this is the beauty of it you you more than compensate for it with the other things that you are long on because once a bull run uh, is on uh, the other momentum stocks will be doing uh, fairly well as well but to answer your question in in one word luck definitely plays a role there are outliers uh, you can miss now uh, when we do back test we do what is called as monte carlo uh, simulations so you basically see thousand equity curves of parallel universes what all could have ha- could have happened so uh, if the overall scheme of things fine you continue with the strategy but uh, but of course you can never take out luck completely out of the equation yeah i hope i've answered your question yes thanks prashant over to you I mean, we interact so much that I don't know what to ask uh, Manish kind of thing. But Manish, I mean, I, I think I have asked this question. I think on the Slack as well, elsewhere as well. There are what around thirty to forty advisors who offer momentum, if not more, on the small caps itself. But we see only one PMS offering a pure price-based momentum 
Why do you think it is? Is it because of a function of liquidity kind of thing? Because we have a high turnover kind of, or what's what's stopping people from? I mean, PMSs are low growing left right center kind of thing, and yet we don't have PMSs coming up with momentum as a strategy network. I mean, we now have mutual funds, but not PMSs. What do you think is the reasoning? Yeah, very valid question. And again, we've had this discussion on our Slack channel so many times. So. uh my answer is as good as yours prashant uh i don't i am not able to put a finger on it as to what is the reason uh maybe liquidity can be one of the reasons but abhi off late i was just going through the pms bazaar list and i realized that uh, hardly any uh any pms is uh, beating their benchmarks and so uh, if there is any need of the r for having a momentum pms it's now uh, uh there are couple of them let me correct you not one i think anish telly also runs a momentum portfolio so there are just two in town yeah thanks manish prashant actually forgets me most of the time so it's okay <laughs> <laughs> hey sorry anish sorry i mean basically i i see yours as more of a uh, what do you say a factor momentum a factor or investing rather than pure momentum itself because i believe you look at i mean it's a i mean more of a i mean i keep confusing you for a multi factor kind of thing because that's what you talk about more or more often rather than pure momentum like me or munish kind of thing sorry about it no 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 i was just pulling a leg yeah so so basically see you uh, i i think it's a more of a uh, you know the way we explain it uh, because uh, uh, see you or uh, Uh, capital mind or um, you know everybody uses moment nobody uses momentum just price momentum everybody uses momentum divided by volatility we are we are also doing the same thing we we use uh, uh, momentum and low volatility but we say that up front we say that both momentum and volatility are part of our investing process whereas everybody else just says momentum so i think that's where the confusion lies So Manish, in between, I ask a quick question from one of our audiences. The question is like, instead of having an active strategy, what could be the downsides for the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. We actually recently wrote a blog on the subject. Ah, uh, uh, so I am of the opinion that uh, uh, Nifty Momentum 200 is a very good index. Ah. Uh, and anybody would do well investing in that index compared to uh, uh nifty uh of course the the caveat is that uh, it basically excels on both sides so wo girta bhi utni speed se hi hai so its drawdown is little bigger than uh, nifty but it outperforms nifty uh, uh hands down uh if you calculated as absolute return or rolling return basis 3 year rolling 5 year rolling uh, whichever way you cut it the momentum index uh, uh, beats uh, beats nifty hands down so it's definitely something that uh, retail should uh, should uh, invest in uh, having said that the the volatility is little higher and uh, there is no downside protection so when once it goes down it basically gives away everything and so uh, because uh, and and it's they, they're not to be blamed per se because their uh, their rebalance uh, timing is such that it is so delayed that by the time their rebalance comes the whole world would have changed so so that is uh, but the, despite all the drawbacks it beats nifty uh, hands down Great, great. Yeah, Manish. So, Amit, uh, you can unmute and ask your question. Uh, hi. Actually, uh, I don't have any question precise, but I have uh, something to share if I am allowed to speak up there. Yeah. Sure. Well, so uh, I have a very small and little experience about the momentum investing. You know, something like so. Uh, <clears throat> there are two segments basically where anyone can invest one is a derivative segment and one is a non derivative segment but a liquidated phase so uh if anyone really wants to go for momentum investing and wants to just sit relax with that so personal i feel like if you choose anything which is not directly indicated with you know uh, linked with you know like uh, 
so much short built ups and aggressive trader you know aggressive activities over there like a derivative segment then you can feel a safe and you know a sharp up edge where you know the things which become out of the th- uh, scene out of the theme वहां पे एक चांस रहता है कि बिकॉज चीजें लोगों के थोड़ा सा दिमाग से बाहर निकल जाती हैं आउट ऑफ द थॉट प्रोसेस होती हैं टॉकर ऑफ द टाउन नहीं होता है वहां पे ग्रोथ अच्छी रहती है कंसिस्टेंट रहती है नॉन डेरिवेटिव का बेस्ट पार्ट इज कि वहां पे बहुत ज्यादा यू नो बहुत ज्यादा हेयर एंड देयर नहीं हो सकता वहां पे अगर किसी को शॉर्ट करना है तो दे हैव टू सेल ओनली द मतलब उन्हें अपना पोर्टफोलियो सेल आउट करना पड़ेगा इंटरडे पोजिशन है तो शाम को कवर करनी पड़ेगी बट डेरिवेटिव सेगमेंट में दे कैन दे कैन डू एनीथिंग मतलब उनका कहीं पे लॉन्ग होगा कहीं से वो शॉर्ट मार सकते हैं अपने आप को किसी भी तरीके से ना दे कैन डू द हैंग ऑन्स तो अगर इन्वेस्टिंग करनी है टर्म बिकॉज इन्वेस्टिंग वर्ड इज हेयर इट्स नॉट अ मोमेंटम ट्रेडिंग इज अ मोमेंटम इन्वेस्टिंग सो पर्सनली आई वुड सजेस्ट कि अगर किसी को लिक्विड काउंटर्स ठीक ठाक अगर दिखते हैं एंड दे आर जस्ट नॉन डेरीवेटिव सेगमेंट में अगर हैं so we can just find a very good momentum over there the good example is you know tata alexi when it was in you know derivative roj isme acche khase moves aate rehte the both directions jab se ye bahar nikla hai tachut khares ke liye fundamentals bhi acche grow kar gaye lekin aap dekho na bahut sare counters hain like they are not in derivative segment itne talk of the town hote bhi nahi hai but they are gaining good they are producing a good wealth for the you know investor point of view so it is my small you know observation about the non derivative segment participation basically for the momentum investing thank you so much thank you amit so manish uh, another question is from uh, ankit hinduza right he is asking how to start building systematic mechanical momentum system for someone having no prior knowledge of coding or software yeah so uh the first thing that i would suggest you to do is to join prashant krish slack channel you will see a repository of information there and uh, that will shorten your learning curve for sure uh, we have done this uh, blog post for money control just google mystic wealth money control and that article basically talks about in detail uh, the answer to this precise question how to start from scratch and what all books to read what all research papers to read and uh, how to get your feet wet on uh, in in coding so uh, something as basic as a uh, uh, a ranking thing can be done on excel and google sheets but if you want to back test then you would probably need uh, some knowledge of python or amy broker yeah okay man so manish uh, can we also talk about risk management so that is a very burning uh, topic basically so risk is one thing we should be very sure and the analogy which you talked about idiot and morons a perpetual idiot so would l- really love to hear on that front also if you like to yeah this uh, presentation that we did prince was more so for uh, bringing home the point amongst the discretionary uh uh traders which is that uh, and this particular analogy is copy pasted from from a market wizard this is not my uh my brain or uh, my origination so i just simply copy pasted this from uh, mark uh, from australia he basically segregated people between uh, uh idiot and moron and the difference was that the morons are perpetual idiots so they repeat the same mistake again and again uh and so the underlying point that mark was trying to make was that it's okay to make a new mistake all the time a uh, new mistake every time uh but it is it is unpardonable uh, sin to repeat the same mistake again because then you're not learning anything and you're a, you're a moron uh and so he went on and he says that the way to make sure that you're not repeating the same mistake again is is to collect data you need to have data points as to what you're doing so majority of discretionary traders are not really keeping a tab on what exactly do they do in an entire day and it's pretty random and almost amounts to gambling uh if you want to be systematic you need to know what you're doing and you need to document everything and so risk management the first step towards risk management comes from documenting what you're doing so that you actually know if you have a system to start with or not uh, like i said prince is outside the scope of uh, this talk to talk about risk management jaise ki maine aapko bataya this can last for hours right and it's a 
it's a topic in itself so right. uh so yeah, you would true. you would do well to go right, through right. so one question is from shashank so he's asking if the drawdowns are large why don't we have a product on the short side for derivative stocks in downward momentum yeah that's a good question uh, uh we are constrained by a small case where there is no shorting possible so it's a long only products that we can offer and secondly uh even outside small case uh, uh, at least uh, at mystic wealth we did not find many takers for a long short portfolio uh, the, the retails not really keen on that i mean it, maybe our sample size is small but that's what uh we figured and uh, uh, apart from that there are uh, taxation issues as well uh, where your short side profits will be taxed uh, at 33 whatever whatever percent yeah uh, right so one question is from the researcher anirudh sir please ask about nifty alpha 50 index uh i would uh, i would uh, request if prashant still here to answer this question this will basically open up a pandora box box uh nifty alpha uh, 50 index uh, is not a uh, uh, index that uh, uh, mutual funds are finding easy to replicate so so over to you prashant <laughs> so i mean look the attraction of nifty alpha 50 is the returns i mean basically it has had one of the best returns in the last couple of years but i mean when you have extraordinary returns you have to ask what has what has it done to gain that extraordinary returns so if you dig into the portfolio of nifty alpha 50 go back in time kind of thing i mean it's tough because you don't i mean nsc doesn't provide any of much of data in terms of historical changes and everything but you there is data i mean if you search for it you will get that point is that for example it had um, i mean tandla i mean very very questionable stocks i mean adani green with very high weightages it's not like weightages of 3% or 5% we are talking about 10 12 15% so when you have high weightage of stocks like uh, stocks that are i mean basically our bcg which quota uh, got tripped up because they could not enter bcg when they had to enter i mean the uh, stock was frozen in upper, upper circuit i mean these are i mean the uh, interior can construct a ba- i mean it's like ba- back testing something that is uh, looks good on paper kind of thing but is just not executable i mean if you are uh, t- i mean and not even i mean forget execution even how do i mean can you really allocate a substantial capital to a stock i mean a portfolio that has that kind of stocks i don't know i mean where the uh, stocks go up for 5% one day and fall down 5% next day kind of thing where it's on in circuits kind of thing so nifty alpha 50 looks good i mean i, I think one of the issues with nifty alpha 50 is that the stocks don't have a i mean the stocks have circuits i mean if you don't have circuits then it will be a different ball game altogether kind of thing then you it's at least executable even then i think it's very questionable about the data itself i spoke with a fund manager who who says that they their team tried to re- recreate the nifty alpha 50 of the past i mean nifty the, i mean nsc just gives you a pure back test numbers kind of thing from uh, inception and they could not come up with no matter what that i mean uh, changes that they, they did could not come up with the same performance as the nsc's performance so i don't know whether how how good the performance is only now we have the live performance and we really know no whether i mean i mean the next few years will tell us but my my own thought process is it, it, it will burn i mean anyone investing will not get really get the alpha he is looking for i mean it may still give i mean nifty play i would say i mean or both or nifty 200 momentum and nifty alpha 50 will be more of nifty plus something more than nifty on a long term but not really as exciting as what you would see on a historical chart kind of thing okay thank you thank you sir so any follow up question anirudh or uh, you got your answer so just one question you uh, you told that execution is difficult uh, and if we compare on a historical basis nifty alpha 50 has given a uh, good better returns than nifty so uh, the problems you have mentioned uh, can those be solved by wo kya solve ho sakte hain bhavishya mein in future it can be solved by any uh, sebi intervention or any uh, changes in the index yeah, yeah why not bhavishya mein kuch bhi ho sakta hai dost but abhi for now uh at least as far as i'm concerned i don't think this is uh, uh, replicable 
I consider myself a, a, a daredevil. Uh, I take crazy risks. Even uh, I don't mind taking Adani exposure, uh, even three, four Adanis in my portfolio. But even with that, I find Nifty Alpha 50 a uh, little too wild to handle uh, because uh, it can basically go long 12, 13% on a totally illiquid counter. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Friends, if you want, I can add, just add. Yeah, Nish, yeah, Nish go ahead, please. Yeah. So, uh, basically, after the Kotak uh, fiasco with uh, Nifty Alpha 50, the uh, NSC, or the, rather the Nifty Indices company, has launched two other indexes. One is called the Nifty 200 Alpha 30, and the other one is the Nifty 100 Alpha 30. Uh, the difference between, I think, one one is the momentum calculation is different. In the Nifty 200, the difference is in the weightage again. And uh, the rebalance period is quarterly. So now let's see, you know, so they basically learned from that. And now they've restricted themselves to a liquid universe. Now let's see if they get the... Uh, products on that and if there is an alpha. Sir, uh, uh, if the indexes you mentioned are newly launched? Yes, they are newly launched. Uh, so you can go to the niftyindices.com uh, website and you can look for these indices. Their fact sheet and their backtested data, everything is available. So can you repeat the name, sir? Uh, one is Nifty 200 Alpha 30 and the other one is Nifty 100 Alpha 30. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Yeah, but as we speak, there are no uh, mutual fund products for retail to invest in it. Yes, sir. They are only Nifty Alpha 50 is uh, replicated by one of the mutual fund. Also, yeah, can I add one more question, sir, if possible? They just learned from that fiasco. And I think after that uh, fiasco, these two indexes were launched. So these are recent launches. So uh, maybe a product is on its way, but not yet as many. Okay. Sir, can I ask one more question? Yeah, please go ahead. Sir, as we see in US markets, there are leveraged 3x uh, indexes, right? So, uh, also in, in our uh, Nifty indices, there is also a 3x, uh, 3x index. So, what's the logic of that 3x, if you can explain? And it's okay if you don't want to answer this question, then also it's okay. Yeah, logic is so uh, is is simple that it is one of one one more option for for people to to hedge their portfolios. So if you have a, it's it's easier for you to create a long short portfolio once you have inverse ETFs uh, in your kitty. That's that's the only logic. I mean, I'm sure as we our our market develops, I don't know when over a period of years uh, we will have the same products as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Anirudh. Uh, so, so Manish, uh, for uh, like from last uh, what we say eleven years, you have been uh, managing public money, and uh, prior to that, you were more into like learning and all. So, what are your uh, big learnings and big mistakes uh, in last uh, eleven fifteen years? Uh, yeah, I think I already shared this, Prince. Uh, I will uh, reiterate it. The My learning has been that uh, majority of my money, I mean, in fact, all my money has been made uh, in the systematic domain. Uh, and even if I look around, uh, and I will like to pass this judgment on not just me, but everyone, uh, everyone I know, barring a handful of exceptions, are uh, the people who have made money have been able to do that only by following some form of a system. Anybody who has uh, ventured into the world of stock markets via discretion uh, has uh, not a positive story to tell. And so my urge is to uh, to the, is to the audience to is to uh, curb your uh, overconfidence and enthusiasm. And admit to the fact that it's a system that will make you money and not your human mind, your discretion. Yeah. All right. Great. So, Manish, one book you already talked about, uh, You Can Be a Stock Market Genius by Joel Greenbelt. Any other book recommendation which uh, our audiences could benefit from? Yeah. 
uh, once again uh, prince i will i will request the audience to google our article on money control where i have extensively detailed all the momentum research papers and the books that they should be reading all right manish so audiences the last 5 minutes if you have any questions or so uh, we can uh, happily take your speaker requests manish we are uh, done with the, almost all the questions which have been asked by the speakers and i have tagged the uh, tweet uh, with the uh, the video which is on position sizing so our audiences can check that uh, tweet and they can uh, listen to that that is very informative and a different perspective so manish uh, before we wrap up uh, i would uh, request you to tell our audiences uh, i mean obviously you have talked about but again uh, what uh, you uh, they can gain out of uh, mystic wealth and offerings you can uh, if you would like to talk about yeah Sure, Prince. Uh, uh, although this was a question and answer session, so I would not like to use it as a, a branding mechanism. But uh, just to end it, Mystic Wealth basically has a couple of uh, momentum offerings. One is Mystic Wealth Momentum, which is a twenty stock automated portfolio uh, with a rebalance done every week. And the second is MMG, which is Mystic Momo Gold. which is a 70 30 uh, asset allocation between momentum and gold with 30 stocks in momentum rebalanced on a monthly basis uh, you can find both both of them on our small case micro site all right thanks we got mahan as a speaker mahan you can unmute and ask your question yeah hello so i've seen a few small cases on momentum like all of them have a limit of uh, investing like up to 40 lakhs or 20 lakhs and i've seen a picture posted by prashant a while ago about uh, slippages it was like a horror movie so uh, i'm really confused if really investing in a small cases worth it because that picture really is haunting me so what do you have to say about that manish yeah so uh it depends on the stocks that you your your algorithm is picking if your algorithm is strict enough on liquidity uh factors the slippages are lot lesser i won't say they will go away but they are lot lesser than the horrifying picture as shown by prashant uh but yeah the the fact of life is that because small case at least hits market orders if you are managing or putting in let's say 30 40 lakhs there will be stocks where you will end up uh, paying a pretty hefty slippage uh so that is the reason there is this uh, cap that you you see on small cases that if you are uh, throwing in uh, putting in your aum is let's say 40 lakhs uh there can be names like in in past mystic wealth have had names like gmm fordler and couple of others where where uh, where the slippages must have hurt okay thank you uh just to interject i mean basically look i mean just because you invest, i mean buy a small case doesn't mean that you have to execute through the small case itself i mean people the the only advantage of small case is that it java lumps all the orders together and sends it basically rather than i mean it uh, doesn't ask you to uh, send in each individual order it will basically lumps everything and sends it as single go which is why it actually is i mean people love it because it makes it seem very easy all you need is to do a single click and done bus but if you are really wanting to what do you say invest a significant sum of money and true as i mean have a advisor who offers only for a small case for example my own uh, suggestion is to take the small case but don't execute through the small case you can execute i mean you will small case will have a different uh, what is a number for you but finally as long as you know what you are doing i mean you can control your slippage you don't have to go out and press a market order you can go out and do a limit order yourself but i mean that's a manual approach which will actually what i mean more messy kind of thing maybe but my own thought process is above a few lakh of rupees when you are in a couple of millions kind of thing it's really worthwhile you will really save a bunch of money. i mean i mean more money than you would have spent on the small case subscription itself i mean there's no compulsion that you have to actually execute through the small case itself even though it offers a very easy way to execute 
Yeah, so this is a very valid point. The family and friends that uh, we have uh, who are invested with the uh, Mystic Wealth Momentum use this particular technique only. Let's say anything above uh, 80 lakh odd that they have invested, they are they are buying in tranches rather than buy. They are just using small case as a medium to get the get the uh, rebalance updates, and they are doing it manually only. So they place limit orders in tranches. Is that Absolutely. what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. What, but what if the price doesn't come to the limit order? Uh, uh, yeah, good point, uh, my friend. But uh, remember, we are not really a intraday strategy. This is a yeah. weekly time frame system. You will get ample time to get filled. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. So Manish, uh, it was a really interesting session. Any closing remarks for the day? Uh, uh, no, nothing from my side, Prince. Thank you for doing this. And I would like to thank the audience for taking our time on uh, Saturday. Uh, it was it was fun. Yeah, great. Prashant, uh, would also love to hear any closing remarks from your end also. And uh, also, uh, I have an open request for you also. Would also like to learn from your experience sometime. So over to you. No, I mean, this. I, I, I told Manish that I wanted this to be more of a session than, I mean, more of a general discussion. Because we have had general discussions a lot of times on Momentum. Look, the moment, I mean, unlike value, where you have a guru in terms of Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger kind of thing. We don't have any big names that we can show off and say, boss, look at that guy. He has done it. Why a momentum? And momentum has its issues. It's not like, I mean, if you are a value investor, for example, you'll be, I mean, invested for, I mean, people talk about investing for, for multi years kind of thing. Well, I mean, for my own, in my own case, for my holding period is approximately, say, four months. So it's not uh, easy to, I mean, if you someone were to give me a thousand crores, I don't think I can get generate returns. I am generally current on my personal portfolio. So it has its limitations kind of thing, but it has its advantages as well. I mean, as a, as a small investor, for me, what I care about is my returns, not about whether it, uh, it I mean, I'm with a, I mean, I don't care what people, others people, I mean, others think about the strategy I am. As long as I think that the strategy is valid, which is, I mean, it is uh, not just in the local sense. I mean, not just, I mean, it's not like only me or Manish are talking about momentum. You look around, you have, I mean, multiple momentum funds in US, listed funds that have long track records kind of thing. You have, I mean, 70 plus uh, papers on SSR and purely on momentum investing. I mean, there's enough for academic evidence to show that uh, momentum has a value. Now, as a small investor, uh, for my own part, our thought process is that I mean, you should, one should explore it and then not dismiss, dismiss it as a kind of a game or a gambling. I mean, someone actually mentioned that uh, uh, pharma sector, I mean, momentum investor jumped on the pharma in 2021 and then they have not gone, got burned kind of thing because they did not have a, I mean, they did not know what, what to do kind of thing. But most of us, me, Manish, we all have made money in pharma kind of thing when the market, I mean, when the trend was up. And when the trend started to decline, we got out. I mean, as simple as that. So I think it's there's value to having momentum. Me, Manish are all full-time. I mean, basically, we are all mostly 100% into momentum. So we are maybe biased in that sense. But I still think there is a high, very high value. And I mean, it requires work. It's not like, I mean, you. It's not a, there's no freebie as Manish explained. It's not like you'll get uh, free uh, alpha without, uh, I mean, there's a, there are trade-offs. You have to accept those trade-offs kind of thing. It takes time. But I think it uh, it deserves a place in most portfolios in any way. I mean, in my opinion. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Prashant. So, guys, uh, it was uh, purely an educational uh, uh, association and uh, any names in between taken were purely for illustration. So, kindly uh, take that, that with a pinch of salt. And again, if you want to gain more uh, knowledge on the subject of momentum investing you can uh, check handles of prashant manish and others who are and even uh, the space is recorded so all the questions which were uh, taken today you can uh, revisit uh, so that will be available at our handles so with this i thank uh, manish uh, for sparing time on weekend for us and uh, sharing his insights it was really nice to have you and even we met a few months ago in Delhi. So it was very interactive on your part as well. 
and the bangalore situation is really bad otherwise uh, saurav would have joined uh, <laughs> today's session so yeah thank you manish thanks prince appreciate it it was fun so thank you guys uh, thanks for connecting with us and in case uh, we missed out on any questions uh, due to twitter glitch or for any other reason you can uh, tag us or dm with the questions uh, we would uh, surely try to get it answered from our uh, guest for today yeah thank you manish uh, thank you prashant and thank you everyone for joining and uh, the recording will be shared soon yeah thank you bye manish bye bye take care everyone